Hi, Miss Princess here once again. So today I will be sharing uh, two slides in regards to um, some tips and tricks on how to render or color your fashion uh, sketches using graphic marker. And also, of course, there will be some additional uh, media such as a technical pen or pencil color. And um, we will be showing you some, some uh, techniques in rendering different types of fabrics. And um, I hope this presentation or this, ses this uh, sharing session will be helpful for you. So um, I will be presenting two slides. Uh, the first slide is more into preliminary or some, uh, some tips and tricks. And whilst the second presentation, it is more into um, still demonstration. Okay. So let's um, look at the first uh, presentation. So this is a uh, little tips and tricks, uh, the step-by-step -step coloring of for fashion design class using graphic marker and pens that I developed last year. Uh, so I have a certain purpose for these, um, some sort of handouts or notes and the objective of this simple handout is to introduce some basic step-by-step -step because some students, some of my students, uh, they thought using graphic marker is somehow difficult um, and they would prefer to use the color or um, pencil color of that sort. And that is more difficult than graphic marker. So I'm, I'm introducing a simple or basic step-by-step -step so that um, using these steps that they will be able to render or to color and to illustrate their designs um, in a more effective way. And um, this time round, I will only cover the front view. So remember, whenever you design, there was always a need to have a rear view as well. Okay, so when the time comes, I shall cover that in later uh, series. So let us start. So <clears throat> you may read the text that is actually in my slide. So I will make it simpler. So first of all, the thing, what is the first thing that you need to do is to get your coloring tools ready. So I have several types of graphic pens. I am not um, obliged to only use one type. So um, I have a, my collection ranges from Copic to Curry Color, Touch 5, Koi Coloring Brush, um, Pris uh, Prisma Color or Prism Color. Um, to Yoken and to other in-house brands that is available in the, session, the stationery um, shop um, in my area. So take note in mind that different brand, uh, different brands, so it differs from one another in terms of quality and of course price. And it's good to have a technical pen as well as gel pen, white gel pen to help you with the rendering in the future. So the tip that I have for my technical pen, it also ranges from 0 0.05 to 1.2. It depends on whatever that you want to do because I'm quite a hoarder. So I have all this range, okay? So let's move on. This is not a compulsory step, but more like on how I do it. It works for me and perhaps I hope it works for you. Before you start um, with the rendering, you need to... Um, you need to decide how do you want to start your drawing. Some of my students, they prefer to have these clean black lines um, using technical pen. Then they color or they render using the graphic marker. Some of my students prefer to stay with pencil for the sketches, rendering, and then use the black pen or black technical pen on top of it. It is actually depends on you and how you want to do it. But one of the things that you need to take note is to ensure that the black pen, it doesn't smudge because um, it really depends on the types of the surface or the types of marker, is it, whether it's alcohol based or water based and um, the surface and your pen as well. So if it mixed up, so it will smudge, so it won't look good. So before anything, you may just uh, start on of on swatch paper so that um, you will find what suits you most in terms of technique. Okay, and like I mentioned, you have to know your marker. Some marker is really easy to use and some is a bit difficult, um, but 
the general rule in using graphic marker, I think, is to avoid um, using it under moving fan or because when you're doing the rendering, it may leave some uh, patched effect. So sometimes it's the paper, sometimes it's your surroundings. So whatever you do, you need to try and your handling will have to be good. You have to control your strokes. So um, you can double the layer to get darker strokes. However it is, your control is more important. So um, no matter how good your marker is, sometimes it really depends on your techniques and also the surface techniques, everything comes together, okay? And um, in rendering, determine your source of sunlight. So I will normally just um, use only one source, just like from this side or this side, okay? And, um, and that's it. So you don't have to really um, be very fussy about the source of sunlight. It's okay to just on one side and that's it, that's good enough. So in order to do this rendering, I prefer to use warm gray. Um, and my warm gray ranges from number one to number five. I think most graphic markers, uh, they do have warm gray, they do have cool gray. Um, this cool and warm, it, it actually gives a different effect. So, but generally I will use warm gray in most of my rendering. And I will have the three markers of, of an odd numbers, one, three, five because one is a lighter, number three is a medium, five is dark for me. So it's easy for me to control. So um, take note that the warm gray will preferably to have two tips. So one is the, the brush tip or the pointer tip and another one is a flat tip. Okay, so use the right tip for to cover a different um, area. If it's a wide area, then you might need to use the flat tip. If it's a smaller area, of course, you need to use the point tip, okay? And don't overdo it, you need to control your strokes or else it's overcooked. Okay, so slow is fast, fast is smooth. You need to go slow and fast at the same time and make sure it's smooth. Okay, try to pull it in one stroke. This needs practice. Um, and avoid, uh, try to do like you're doing pencil color. It will look painfully amateur. So you need to practice in um, using a um, graphic pen. Okay, and to add additional effects and textures. So you can use um, in here, I use white gel pen to create some texture effects on jacket and also the skirt. So if you notice on the collar and um, in, on the skirt, so I use white gel pen to give some effects, okay? Nothing special, but just to give some effects. So take note on how your croquis is actually standing, is it? frontal or is it three quarter because that really gives um, that really contributes to whether your lines should be straight or should be wavy of some sort okay so and my last tips i think it is important to time yourself um, i i love to time myself whenever i do sketches because if i have to spend like around 30 minutes to 40 minutes per sketches imagine if you are being tasked by the lecturer to do 100 sketches so that is not why so um, time yourself and look at the area of which you spend too much time on. Maybe you need to do some shortcuts on that, okay? And for this drawing, I roughly do it around 15 minutes and that's a bit slow. So remember in design, it is important to um, render your, your, your design quickly or to sketching quickly because your hand is like a printer and your head full of ideas and the ideas come and go so fast and you need to catch up with your brain. So therefore the drawing skill is um, very crucial. And sometimes um, having uh, the right tool is the key to do your sketches um, fast and, and effective, okay? If you tend to draw the croquis every single time you do sketches and you, that will be very painful for you. <laughs> Therefore, in this process later on, we will see on how we can use the uh, croquis as your template for your front and back design. Okay, so let's move to the next slide. Okay. So this, um, 
So in this part, I will be sharing on how to draw and render in fashion design. So in this particular, um, in one of the on one, in one of the course that we teach in UITM that we have this in one particular course that actually requires um, some exercise in drawing and rendering. So in this one, the students are required to produce collage of two different designs and combine it top and bottom and they have to redraw. So this redraw is to understand the component of the design, the, the silhouette and also the types of fabric and use the right technique to actually um, render the fabric, okay? So this is the example and it's hideous. So let's do a new one, okay? So in my previous video, what I've already shown on how to use, uh, on how to produce your own croquis. So we already have that template. So what we need to do is to use, um, what I'm using here is a butter, butter paper. You can use um, a normal paper and put light box behind it, whatever that suits you best. Or you can use normal paper as long as you can see the drawing behind as your template. And that will work very fast for you. Uh, another technique is to use your actual template, your, your actual croquis and draw on the, the back, the back side, okay, <laughs> on the other side of the paper. So, uh, and that actually, um, you, don't you don't even have to have templates like this. So, but yeah, there is another technique. So I'm, let me show you one technique that we're used to. Okay, and at the same time, also you'll be, you, sh you will be practicing your drawing skill. So first of all, you trace the head, okay? And then look at the silhouette of the garment. Is it far from the body or is it close to the body? So in this particular um, design, the top is a bit loose, okay, this slightly dropped shoulder, the collar is slightly high, and the sleeve is a blouson sleeve with some grip using belt on the waist, okay. And then after that, look for the opening, first silhouette, second opening. So the opening of this, uh, of this top is center front. Okay, remember to put the center front and you determine that as the um, opening. So for opening for women for shirt is right on top of the left. Okay, women always right. So the opening should be right on top of the left. Okay, and then thirdly is the design detail. So look for the type of collar and how to draw it and type of pocket and how to draw it. You may refer to pattern book on how to redraw this uh, design detail uh, because sometimes you you know what type of pocket that is but you don't really know how to draw it so it is best to refer uh, in your pattern book because sometimes they do provide a very clear technical drawing in the pattern book okay F after finishing the the top part then you can move to the bottom part of the design and in this case, it's a simple airline skirt of um, tweed fabric, okay? So there you go, you have the full um, sketches or the full design. Don't forget the shoes and don't forget the hand. And you can also, um, using the technique that I have taught in my previous video on how to do the design from the back. So this is how it is. It's a bit awkward, uh, the, the pose is a bit awkward, but um, it works to show your design that it works, okay? So um, why do we say it's awkward? Because we don't really know where the weight of the body actually is, okay? It's good to acknowledge that, so maybe you can avoid that in the future. All right, so let's um, look into the rendering part. So first of all, you can use the, um, the flesh color marker to Render the face. Now, don't render everything. So this is my way of doing it. I love leaving some empty space uh, in which I don't color at all uh, to give it some uh, some contour of the of the drawing. So I will start on the outer part of the face and also the neck. And then, secondly, I will um, I will make sure that the, there's a triangle here. I will leave it blank. I won't color it. And also upside down triangle and also upside down triangle over here, as you can see over there. So I will color underneath the eye 
and also underneath the nose and also underneath the, the lower lip, okay? And um, after rendering the face, not rendering, somehow like coloring the face, next step is the hair. So like I told in my previous video, the general rule in uh, rendering the hair, three part. On top of the forehead, on top of the ear and slightly below the ear or between the neck and it depends on the length of the hair. So in this case, we just focus on top of the forehead and uh, on top of the ear and then like on underneath the ear, okay? So, um, and I use uh, another marker to render outside of the hair just to give it some feel and some, some contour, all right? Like I told you in the early, um, like I told earlier, um, you can start with uh, drawing with or, uh, a black, how to say, it's already lined with black pen, another one only using pencil. So in this case, we're just using pencil and we straight away jump into coloring. So I have, I, this is not quite done yet, but I've already like uh, give a little bit of touch for the face and the hair. So I move on to the face using um, black technical pen 0 0.3. So I try, I just uh, do the eyebrow, the upper part of the eye, two, no, two dots for the nose, the upper part of the lips, and also just one line underneath, uh, I mean for the lower lip. Because this drawing is in F4 size, it's a bit small. So that is the part that I will want to cover, okay? And then using the sand pen, I render the hair, not render, outline the hair. So when you outline hair, so it is important to give some quality of lines. I didn't change the, my pen, so I just used the same pen. But then there's a certain part that I just go dark and then go slightly lighter and then, and then um, another repetitive lines. So that is how you add quality of lines in your drawing. So notice that I also frame the face, the shape of the face using the pen, okay? After finishing that, so I just take another marker of a darker color. So I do one more time rendering on the face because I don't feel this is good enough. So I add more. Okay. And when I think that it is not enough again, when I add more again, I overcooked it. So that is the thing that you need to be careful of. Don't overcook your, your sketches. Right. So um, to save to save the face. So I just put some red lipstick, red bright lipstick using just a normal pen and a pencil color to give it uh, some purple eyeshadow, okay? And don't forget to color the rest of the flesh, the hands and the leg. So we move on to the fabric. So this design, it has printed fabric and it has a texture fabric. So we go for the printed fabric on the sleeve. It's very colorful. So first, I just pick whatever color that I think will match the print. Just pick it out everything. And start with the lightest color. Um, it seems like I'm using pencil color, but I don't because my mark is actually really dry. So, so it gives some uh, very rough effects on the sketches. And then after finishing the, the soft color, then I start putting the strong lines on the print using just a normal black pen. And the design has polka dots all over the top. So I start with the body first, and then I move on to the, the peplum part. The, the, it is not a peplum, it's actually a shirt that you actually just like grip it on the waist. So notice that how the, the print is um, of the polka dot is placed so it is not, all parallel line is actually the lines that with some little um, arrangement. So you need to uh, pick up that arrangement and place it as it is, according to the, the direction of the fabrics. And we go for the skirt. I'm a bit lazy in this part because I know it is difficult to do the effects for tweed. So this is my cheat. Okay, so first I color the, the background using beige and then I was supposed to do lines like this and then a horizontal line, vertical line, horizontal line and then on this part is the horizontal under next to the vertical and then there it goes like it should be like that but it's so small it's so 
so tiny so i don't want to spend much time so eventually i just like dot 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 that using warm gray okay don't forget the shoes and that is your final look so same with the leg um, because we have rendered the face so it has to have the same tan for the hands and also the legs yeah so this is my um somehow i finished coloring it i think i'm good okay then i use warm gray to give some uh shadow or tone always leave it bright on top of the bus and underneath the bus always darken it a little bit to give some contour that's why you don't really have to draw a very big bus to begin with but you need to render it this way so i use the warm gray underneath here underneath here underneath the neck so underneath the skirts over here on the knee okay in the inner part of the legs and also uh, some areas on the skirt then i use black technical pen to out to draw some outline to make it clear in terms of the the design detail and then i use white pencil color to give some shine effects on the skirt and that is our final product in which i use black marker to line the outer part of this uh, drawing why because after this we are going to scan this and we're going to crop it using photoshop so it will be easier if we do it this way because we already border with the black marker. So there is one way of doing it. So I feel like, okay, this is like a standard one. So let's do something fun. So the fun first will come in the form of fun pose. Okay, so using the same um, template. So I just changed the position of the, of the leg. Okay, so it's like tilt the leg a little bit. Okay, so this one, it will be, um, I will be uh, demonstrating, still demonstrating. Um, for fur, satin, organza, and also denim. Okay, represent different types of surface or different techniques of doing it. It's not that difficult though. Okay, so we move on to uh, using the croquis if you look at it so remember to put the lines for the way so then we know whenever we draw a new line we know it's where's the waist where's the bus so you don't get lost doing it the same with the hand okay all right let's start with the face so that is how you should render it if you missed it in the earlier part just now okay and the fur all right how to use a um, graphic marker to render the fur always go by three color rule you can you should start with the three color rule light medium dark normal okay so have um just uh, take your look at in look to your your marker so three colors that represent that color of the fur like in this case the first color is very light so using i was using copic so and then i just um just uh color a little bit on the area that i thought that would be light okay and don't color everything like everything has to be colored no just leave some area white it's okay right and when it's white so it gives some contour right white space is good after the first round of color so i took my uh, marker my koi marker it has a very nice uh, pointed brush like point tip okay and i use it to uh, somehow give a a very light stroke, but a very light short stroke uh, next to the the light area just now, okay? And to the area, to the sleeve, and eventually to the whole part because the fur is that color. I think it's a mink, mink fur. Yeah. All right. And then um, you don't really have to have the koi brush to really um, render the fur. So for this one, then I used a copy of the darker tone to give as the finish to give uh, some effects as the finishing touch. Okay, and there you go. And that is how you color the fur. For the top, it is satin top, so it's a um, it's a fuchsia satin top, and it's satin is a reflecting material. So reflecting material, you really need to leave some white space. You don't have to color everything. If you color everything and you use um, 
white pencil color to 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 give some effects it won't be the same it will give an impression of like um, fabric like sweat or corduroy because when you use that it, it seems like it is a bit matte okay and this one really shiny so we just leave a very clear white patch on the top so um, this top the setting top is a bit loose and it's the effects will be wavy on the body. So that is how, that is why I put wavy effects on the body. Okay, for the fuchsia, I use Prisma color. And for the organza, it's like an organza sash on the waist. So the first thing I do is, you okay, you have to determine the color of your sash. My sash is beige in color. So I use um, one of my marker. In this case, I use the koi one more time. And just like give some impression of how the fabric will, you know, the fabric is actually being placed on the waist. So it's like being crumpled and being tied, just like that. And then for the denim, I use Yokan. This marker has been in my position for so long and it's still good. I'm not promoting Yokan, I'm just telling you that the marker is still good. Okay. So um, I just, I just uh, do some strokes for the denim. I think the general rule when um, you render your, your sketches, you need to render it according to the form that it adhere to. So in this case, the, the denim is actually a form fitting to the leg. So you don't do this way, therefore you do this way to rather accentuate and to complement the form so that um, although you're coloring it in 2D, it will appear then very solid tubular form, okay? Leave some white space, like I mentioned just now. So look at the, um, the sash part. So transparent material, you can see, you can still uh, look through the fabrics that's inside it. So I just do a very light stroke because considering that this model is using high waisted denim. So the sash over there, although being placed on the waist, you can still see the denim. So that is how we should go. So we go pink color hair. Remember one, two, three, pink color lipstick and pink color stiletto. So again, stilettos are made of patent material. So it should be shiny. So leave some white area. Yeah. Okay. So it's a bit boring to use, um, Let's say if you feel bored to use a uh, black technical pen, you can use ball pen. So in this case, I use blue ball pen to give the outline instead of black pen, the usual one. Okay, so I use this pen to render everything from the hair to the face to the body, everything. And there you go. After finish doing the line, so I just render it um, lightly using warm gray. Uh, the certain part of the, the body. And then I do some effects for the jeans. So in this case, I use pencil color and I cross hatch it because just now when we were, when we were using the Yorken marker, we go straight lines, like I said, to, to complement the form of the legs. And by using the pencil color blue color, just do it cross hatch, give it some course effect. So I did it all the way through the pants. Okay. And then I use white gel pen to give some effects of a running stitch on the denim. That is very subtle. If you wish it to be subtle, you can just let it be. If you wish it to be very bold, then perhaps you need to do it two or three times so that the color really comes out. Okay. And then finally, I use white pencil color to give some um, reflection, okay? So you see how eventually I um, draw, or I, yeah, I render the, the sash part and it gives you the impression of it's a see-through fabric. If you can see, I've already put some outline over here. So um, since I use blue pen, so I think, yeah, maybe it's fun to use blue Sharpie to do the outline. In the first sketches just now, we use black marker. So this one, let's use blue Sharpie. Yes, but then 
if you look at the, how I rendered the fur, I didn't just go straight lines because the what's the point of doing it painfully one by one just now. So remember when you outline a textured fabric, you need to complement the texture or else it's just a waste of time. Okay, when you want to crop it using Photoshop later, there will always be a way for, to do on how to do that. All right, so um, this is before we do the cross hatching of the pants. So notice that how I render the the top using warm grain number five, always leave on the top of the bars clear from any um, shading, okay? So you can shade underneath the bars inside of the area over here inside. Also in the inner part of the pants, okay, whenever, just like this part, this part should be um, darkened, okay? And this part of the neck. So there you go. So this is our first design that we did just now, okay? And this one, the other one that we did. So using the same croquis, you can do two, uh, how to say, two poses. It's not very different, it's not very different. But you can change the head if you want to. So you, but you, then you have to have another croquis. Okay, and you can change the hairstyle, however you want to do it. Therefore, I think, um, yeah, this is the way of doing it. It's, it's not that difficult. So I hope you have fun. Uh, this is my way of doing it. And I hope if, uh, I hope this is, will give you some clue on how to handle the graphic marker to render, to color, and to draw your fashion sketches. <laughs>